The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. A breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend... Not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. The human voice. It can be sweet as music, powerful as thunder, and so, my fellow Americans, cheerful as laughter. (laughs) But for millions of people, it can also be a sign of COPD. This serious lung disease can make it so hard to breathe, you often can't catch a breath or finish a sentence, let alone carry a tune. And many who have COPD don't even know it. That's where your voice comes in. If you think you or a loved one have symptoms, talk with a health care provider. Early diagnosis can mean better treatments and quality of life. Join us in raising our voices for the millions with COPD who can't. Learn more, breathe better at NIH.gov.
as a mother, you don't want to have to worry about this bill is coming, but then she needs this chemo. That's a decision you shouldn't have to make. It's a huge burden lifted financially, and so it allows you to give singular focus to your child. I've never known a hospital that takes care of their patients so thoroughly. That was the first thing I was like, how are we going to do this? When they told us that we didn't have to pay a single bill, I was like, wow. They pretty much have saved us. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. And now your focus is supporting this child. There is not another hospital like St. Jude. The patient care is unmatchable. It saved my life. It saved my daughter's life. It saved our family. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. and welcome aboard. Yes, it is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from the Bunker Eyes studio this Thursday, Thursday morning, September number, what, seven, in the year of our Lord, 2017, as we kick things off uh, with this. Also, it is Military Tribute Thursday, which means uh, uh, we've got a couple of things going on today. Got some military news, got a military tribute to a fallen hero from World War II. Interesting story. Might bring a little tear to your eye. Uh, it's presented a little bit differently today. I think this is the way we're going to do it uh, from now on. As well, of course, as we'll try to stick in there a, a military tribute a song. Um, you know, uh, got to say that the, 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 the whole... Well, we got the we got the stuff that's going on with Irma. Now, notice, notice, folks, how because evidently, um, with Harvey, recovery efforts, you know, uh, uh, recovery and reclaiming efforts in Texas seem to be going so well that they don't have anything to report on. Uh, and and they don't have the they don't have the ability. Well, I shouldn't say they don't have the ability. They don't they don't have the uh, the energy at the moment to try to make stuff up because of Irma. So there's nothing for them to actually report on. It takes energy to make stuff up. Because I mean, well, because the news they they have to they have to at least try to keep their lies straight. You know, they have to coordinate. You know, at least with you know, uh, within their own network if not with other networks, in order to keep everything kosher and straight, right? So, so people don't look at one network and they're being told one story and look at another network and being told something totally different. So they, they do coordinate, by the way. They do coordinate. You can see this quite regularly. When they come out with it, when they all start using the same word or the same phrase, in nearly exactly the same way, at nearly exactly the same time. I mean, you could watch the news. Remember, the, the, the first time people really noticed this is when everybody on the, uh, in the news, uh, I think it, it was uh, with um, um, Romney. Was it Romney? When they were using the term gravitas. Now, nobody used the word gravitas before then. Then all of a sudden, it seemed like every anchor and every anchorette on just about every news outlet, national and local, was using that word. So don't tell me they don't, and they've done it plenty of times after that, so don't tell me that they don't coordinate, because they do. They get the memo, memo goes out, well, this is the word, this is the phrase that we're going to use, you need to push. So they do coordinate. 
So they don't have the energy or the time right now to coordinate for it, to lie about what's happening on Harvey. So that means they would actually have to put cameras on the ground and anchor and anchorettes out there to tell the truth. And the truth is, is that it's obviously going pretty well. A lot better than, it, than, than um, you know, when they claimed about, uh, uh, you know, Katrina and Louisiana and New Orleans. Of course, you know, they blame Bush for that, but that was that was the governor and the, and the mayor's fault, really. Although I do I have seen some stories about the, you know, Harvey people trying to trying to blame the Republican assembly and the Republican governors for not fixing the levees in Texas. You know, they had uh they there there are stories that the reason why that they were rebuffed is because there was language put in the bills that would tie it all to global, man-made global warming. Well, hello, and because the oil companies didn't want that language. Oh, that's a bunch of BS. First of all, there is no way that they could have ever have built anything to withhold all the water from such a storm. I mean, that's not even, that's not even a once-in-a-hundred-year storm, according to... Uh, you know, climatologists and and, the, and weatherologists and people who are supposed to know about climate. It's like once in a thousand years. You don't build stuff to, to withstand something that happens that rarely. Not, not because Harvey was so powerful, but because Harvey was sandwiched between two high pressure zones that didn't allow Harvey, Harvey to move. So it just kept dumping rain. I mean, inch, 50, 60, 70 inches of rain. You, you can't build something that will contain that type of rainfall in such a short period of time. Now, if Harvey was a regular storm where it just pulled in, you know, uh, came in and blew out of town, like most hurricanes do, even at, at, at that rate, at a, at a Cat 4, it would have been able to withstand all of, the, all of that, uh, all of the, the rain. The normal rain from a Cat 4. So there was no problem with it. Now, the reason why they're saying this is two, two reasons. One, because there has been some legislation introduced by Democrats in Texas to try to beef up or expand or raise or what have you, do whatever they needed to do with the levees. And they did want to tie it to global warming because they wanted to put special taxes or fees on oil companies and anybody with a carbon footprint, basically. And so the Republicans said, no, we're not doing that. That's ridiculous. Give us a clean bill and we'll discuss it and probably pass it. No such thing came about. And the other reason is because of what happened in Katrina. They want to, because we know that they took a lot of the money, especially the federal money that was supposed to go towards reinforcing, rebuilding, and expanding the levy system in New Orleans. We found out they took the money and didn't do that. So it's not as if Texas was unprepared. New Orleans was unprepared because people cheated the system. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. People went to jail. I don't think you're going to find anybody, any politician going to jail over Harvey. We had people indicted and some people going to jail over Katrina. Or if they didn't get him on Katrina, they got him for other things. Uh, Negan, anybody? Negan. So, but we're, I don't think you're going to get anybody going to get being indicted or going to jail over Harvey, except for maybe the Houston mayor. But even even he started to come around pretty damn quick after he realized he made a mistake. Although if Houston reelects him, it's their own damn fault. So there's nothing for them to discuss about Harvey. So all they're going to do now is talk about what? Irma. Got all kinds of things that they're still talking. Irma, you know, has bl- has blown through parts of um, uh, the Caribbean. And it's, it, you know, the first pictures, of course, coming out are just complete and sheer and utter devastation. But folks, um, l- l- let me remind you. Every time that there's a hurricane that, go, that blows through many of the Caribbean island nations, the first pictures that come out are complete and sheer and utter. I don't care if it's a Cat 2 or a Cat 3. 
it's a complete flat line. Uh, be, well, because they don't have the same building standards as we do. And they do, most, 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 because the people can't afford it. The people live in shanties. And so what, so what do they do when they rebuild? They rebuild using all that stuff that they pick up off the ground because they don't have massive uh, uh, recycling plants or, or garbage dumps on the islands and they don't dump that stuff into the sea. So they reuse it. So what do they, they rebuild shanties. They don't build real housing in many places in the Caribbean. And this is, this is just who they are. They don't have, the, it's not that they don't have the knowledge, because it's easy to get the knowledge. They just don't have the ability. Now, in the Caribbean islands that tend to have more tourism, well, we see that the places where tourists go usually withstand hurricanes a lot better because they're built better because the money's there to build them better. It's not there for the, for the general population that actually lives on the island. They live in, they live in more shanty t- style and stick built house, simple, simply built stick housing. And so every time a hurricane, you know, you know, huffs and puffs a little bit and blows across these, uh, any, just about any of these Caribbean islands, we get the pictures back. It's total flatline devastation. This is nothing new. This is nothing different. This is nothing, I hate to say it, it's nothing special. It's really, I mean, every time a hurricane, you're going to get, you're going to get massive death and destruction in many of these Caribbean islands away from the tourist sections. Now, notice they don't give you any pictures usually of, of the tourist areas. That's where the money is. And rightfully so, people come there to spend money, which in a lot of these Caribbean islands is their biggest or only industry. They don't have a whole hell of a lot of industry. Hell, they're islands. They don't have a whole hell of a lot of room for industry. You also got to look at their footprint. It's not like they can have, you know, multiple kinds of industry there. They don't have the population for it, and they don't have the education system for it, and they don't have the space or room, land space for it. So they do the best that they can. Either they, you know, either they grow the uh, the wonderful crops, you know, like tobacco or or sugar, sugar cane, or some other simplistic type of of agriculture, or they're they're in tourism. They do tourist stuff. That's that's a lot of of the Caribbean's uh, islands island nations' biggest industry. Tour, you stop bringing cruise ships in, and islands are going to die, literally. And by, by the way, for all of you people who are you know who, who think that uh, man-made global warming, you know uh, the cruise ships use up uh, burn a lot of fuel. They're not nuclear. I don't know of a singular nuclear-powered cruise ship. Is there one out there? I don't know of any. They're all diesel electric, if I'm not mistaken. So they burn a lot of fuel. But for what? Just for people to, to have fun. And they have a lot of fun. That's all they do. They, they eat a lot on the ship, and they burn a lot of fuel to go, go from place to place to spend money. And all that money helps all of those Caribbean islands that those ships go pull into port survive. Especially now when they keep building bigger and bigger. I mean, you're getting cruise ships now that, uh, that have four, four, four to 6,000. Pa- the the, the uh, Royal Caribbean is putting a, a what, uh, October of 2018? They have a new ship, I forget the name of the ship, new ship coming, cruise ship coming out, world's biggest cruise ship. It's going to hold over 6,100 passengers. Now, you pull in a cruise ship that has four to 6,000 people with money to spend on it, and you have, you know, two or three of those a day pulling in a day. That's a lot of potential money. Well, of course, these island nations are going to compete and bid for that kind of stuff. They want these these ships to pull in. And we keep putting more and more of these ships in the, in the ocean, in the Caribbean, and more and more people 
are affording to take, uh, being able to afford to take cruise, a cruise, either a five day, seven day, 10 day, a uh, 14 day. Their people are taking cruises. I mean, cruises are be- because, because the ships are getting so large, the fares for cruises are coming down. You know, where it used to cost, you know, $1,000, $1,500 for, for, for a five-day cruise, now you can pick up a cabin for 300 bucks for a seven-day cruise. Just look it, up, look it up online. I mean, in, look, look. You know, I went on my first cruise, my first cruise really ever, uh, last about a year ago. You don't have to spend another dime once you get on board. You really don't. I mean, they include just about every, I mean, well, if you want alcohol, you got to buy alcohol. If you want tobacco, you got to buy tobacco. Basically, you don't have to spend another diet. I mean, there's so much going on that's already included, including eating, food. It's everywhere. So hurricanes not only devastate the Caribbean islands as far as the actual population, but it also hurts their pocketbook because cruise ships can't pull into port. So the, the, and that's their only industry in many cases. And in some cases, it's their, it's their biggest industry. They just don't have the ability to build to withstand hurricanes. So every time a hurricane blows through, the first pictures you're going to see that make us feel all so awful and terrible is what happens every time a hurricane. I don't, even, I don't care if it's a Category 1 A Category 1 hurricane is going to blow over and flatten many of the buildings on many of the Caribbean islands because they're really just stick-built shanties because that's all the people can afford. And don't feel sorry for them because most of them are not starving. They just don't have the ability to build structures that can withstand major wind forces and don't 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 start sending them money for you know uh, well I, hell i think we've tried that i mean how long ago was was a dominican a dominican republic hit and how long ago with a with a hurricane a devastating hurricane they're still recovering how long ago was was uh, uh their neighbor uh devastated by by an earthquake they're still recovering from, from that, even though we've collected billions of dollars and sent it to the, uh, uh, the Haitian Dominican island. They're still recovering. Is it our fault? No, according to leftists, it should be our fault, but it's not our fault. We sent them money. You know whose fault it is? It's their, it's their island politicians' fault because many of them absconded with a lot of that money, especially in Haiti. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Eccles Show. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. 
What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. And now a message from our sponsor. Ladies, tired of drying your hair with the same old vacuum cleaner? Try Avon Shave brand new Beauty Locks portable hair dryer. It's smaller, it's faster, it's guaranteed to give you the hair you've always wanted in half the time. Beauty Locks is delicate and dainty just like you. The dryer weighs only a pound and easily fits in your hands. Now that's beauty and convenience. With a speedy motor that will dry your hair in as little as 25 minutes, you can get gorgeous hair without falling behind schedule. Don't worry about the little ones or that pie in the oven. Thanks to an extra long extension cord, you can move around while primping your locks. Forget those long trips to the salon and no more waiting for hours under monster machines. Alvon Shea gives you an easy and speedy hairdo that will blow your man away. Get it now at your nearest Macy's. You're listening to The Rod Eccles Show. Let truth be told. Six zero three eight three five three two two six is the call in hotline number this morning. Uh, you know, let me clarify something. It is not that these people. When I say shanty in in the Caribbean islands, now I know a lot of people are probably thinking, "Well, I've seen pictures, man. And they're, they're not they're not metal corrugated walls and, and roofs. That, no, not those kind of shanties." Now understand that mo- th- th- these is- the Caribbean islands, the islands themselves have very little, if any, natural resources. You know, sure, they may have some wood because they have trees, but they can't cut down all the trees. And a lot of the, a lot of that wood may not be building material type of wood. So think of Hawaii in the United States. Now, is Hawaii a poor, poor state? No, it's not a poor state. By far, it is not a poor state. But it is, ex- it is expensive to live on Hawaii. Why? Because just about everything has either got to be flown or, or, or floated in on a boat. There isn't much in the way of natural resources on the islands of Hawaii. There isn't. So it's expensive. That includes building materials. So sure, you have people that have, you know, the, these thinly coated adobe tile homes, but they're, they're really stick built. There's not a lot of concrete and cement running around because it's expensive to bring in the ingredients to make it. So a lot of stuff is made out of wood and metal because metal is easier to ship in and it's cheaper. It's not as heavy. Now I say metal, I mean sheet metal. It's not as heavy as all the ingredients for concrete. So they can't utilize that stuff because it's expensive to bring in. So they're not going to be able to build uh, places and homes and and businesses that can withstand hurricanes. You know, even even a two or three category, let alone a five. And it's usually the places that do withstand it are those places that are where tourists go, where the money is. Because foreign investment usually comes in. And builds the hotels and motels and docks and, 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 and shops that surround it and all that kind of – and activities and that kind of stuff. That's just the way it is. It's not that they're poor. Like, you know, I, I mean, sure, they're not, they're not wealthy, but a lot of Caribbean islands, they, they make – for their islands, they make a decent living. Many of them are, 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 are what we would construe to be middle, middle class here. If they had, if they had the equivalent income here, they would be close to, they'd be lower in middle class, but they'd be middle class. They're living comfortably, but they can't afford, you know, to, to build. I just look at Hawaii, how expensive it is to build in Hawaii. And they got to ship all that stuff in literally just saying, uh, I'm not trying to put down the people of Antigua or Aguila or, or Jamaica or any place like that. They're not stupid. 
It's just that they don't have the industry or the natural resources, and to ship all that stuff in is expensive. Very expensive. So they use utilize what they have. Plain and simple. No, it's no, no more complicated than that, really. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a non-profit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again, or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more, and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child eaten a tube of toothpaste, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first for fast, free advice from medical professionals. Call 1-800-222-1222 anytime, anywhere. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Hi, I'm Hilary Duff. As a mom, I'm proud to support the March of Dimes in helping more women have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. That's why I walk in March for Babies. The money we raise funds research and local programs that help babies overcome the challenges of premature birth and birth defects. Sign up today at marchforbabies.org. Together, we can help make healthier babies possible for thousands of families. It's pretty amazing when you consider that seven years ago, we didn't have the treatments we have now. We cure 80% of children with cancer. Go back 50 years, we were curing 20 to 30%. This is the miracle story of modern medicine. We understand what makes this cancer tick. And of course, without donors from around the world, this just couldn't happen. There's one thing we're focused on, and that's beating this thing. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. America's wounded warriors are coming home. After serving on foreign shores, these brave men and women are returning to their families and communities. Many have wounds you can see, and many have wounds you can't see, like post-traumatic stress disorder. Now that these warriors are back home, they are ready to enter the civilian workforce. To help, Wounded Warrior Project has developed the Warriors to Work program a career counseling service that helps warriors translate their military experience to the civilian workplace. These extraordinary men and women bring proven, world-class job skills and a unique perspective on teamwork to the job. 
and to ensure the right warrior finds the right job, Wounded Warrior Project works with employers to find just the right match. When you hire a Wounded Warrior, you hire an intelligent, talented, and committed new employee. Contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home the brave. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. You know, I never claim to know everything. I'm constantly learning. And I'm also a people watcher and a people listener. In other words, I listen to people, even if they're even if it's only just reading what they write. And sometimes sometimes there's a person that opens my eyes to something that I didn't see before. And it explains a lot. And then I notice it. Once, once your eyes are open, they can only be closed if you choose to close them. So on Twitter, I have this, this, uh, this little millennial babe <laughs> who's trying to chastise me because, uh, you know, I, I claim not to be just black. But here's the thing. You see, I, I've often said this, that... that that people who claim other people are racist are really the racist ones. And I've, I've said this, they're, they're the ones that see race or color, skin color first. And that's exactly what she did. You know, she says, when I see a picture of you, I see a black man. I said, really? Really? There are people who see me and think that I'm Puerto Rican or Dominican. I've had Puerto Ricans and Dominicans think I'm Puerto Rican or Dominican. In fact, I've had some Dominicans be mad at me because I don't speak Spanish. Because that's how much they thought I was Dominican. Hey, you don't like your heritage, man? Well, I'm not Dominican. Oh, well, I thought you was Dominican. You look Dominican. But this girl says it's all she sees is a black guy. Like, wait a minute. I don't see skin color first. You obviously do. But here's the, I've always known that, but here's the uh, other eye opener that I got by talking with her. They, you've got millennials now that have this idea that we have to allow people into this country, you know, DACA and let them stay here because nobody is able to control where they come from. In other words, you don't have a choice whether you're born into a white family, black family, mixed race family, Asian family, what have you. And you don't have a choice of what country you're born into. So you, you, according to them, should have the right to migrate all over the planet and be anywhere you want. So in other words, 320 million people have won life's birth lottery, and that's not fair. Because nobody has, has the ability to choose who they are, but everybody has, a, has the opportunity, or, and it, it supposedly has the opportunity to, to choose who they become, but they don't have a choice of who they are. I think that is the most convoluted BS I've ever heard of, but this is, the, this is their feeling. This, it, it, they're not thinking about it. This is their feeling. And then when you express to them and tell them, well, you, you know, every country has immigration laws and every country, every society, every nation has the right to decide if they are not them, who comes to live among them. Now, obviously, if you are, if you are a devout, uh, religious, you know, let's say state, uh, well, I'm just going to say it out. I mean, we don't, we don't actually have places, well, we do in the Middle East, but let's just say you are a strict Catholic country. You're the Vatican. Okay, you're like the Vatican. Do you think you really want a bunch of atheists who do not believe the way you believe and do not believe in the laws that you believe in to come live among you? No, you don't. You have the right to congregate with whom you want to congregate and live among who you want to live among. 
You're not going to want some heretic coming in and destroying your society. That's just absolutely an insanity. But we're supposed, I guess here in the United States, according to these wonderful millennials, we're supposed to allow anybody and everybody who wants to come here because it's not fair that only 320 million people got out of 7 billion people got, got the chance to be born in the USA. It's not fair. And these people don't know that, you know, DACA, they don't know the country that they came from. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, I've heard that too. They don't know the country they came from. Yeah, they do. They know what they are. They know if they're Honduran or if they're Mexican or if they're Guatemalan or if they're Ecuadorian. They know. And as I said yesterday, they have family still because they didn't bring the whole damn family. These DACA kids came by themselves because their parents or their relatives put them on, a, on, a, on an airplane or a, or a train and sent them north. Now, some of them, not all of them, and as far as I can tell and read, not the majority of them. Some of them had their parents be able to come and join them. But that's it. They had their immediate family. That's, you know, maybe they got a brother or a sister or, or five or ten that were able to come join them. Not the whole family. So they still have family in the country that they actually come from. I, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, it's ludicrous to even begin to... Th- now, now look, again, I don't, when, when I see a pretty girl, a pretty woman, I say, wow, that's a beautiful woman. That's the first thing. Well, I'm, I'm going to admit it. That, that, that's the first thing I see. And then, I might, you know, if, if she looks exotic, I might wonder what her ethnic makeup is because I wonder... Who had to come together to make her? Well, I mean, you can call it sexist if you want. Fine. I don't look at a person and say, oh, there goes a Mexican woman and she's pretty. Or there's a pretty, pretty black woman. I don't say that. I say, oh, that's a gorgeous woman. It doesn't matter where she came from. I don't see color first. I see human beings. Isn't that what Martin Luther King saw in his dream man, for men to measure the character of one or to measure the content of one's character not the color of their skin and here this millennial is measuring me by the color of my skin as she perceives it isn't that interesting now, of course you know hey i'm part cherokee and i can prove it and all of a sudden i'm supposed to you know well that's not what you look like so you shouldn't you shouldn't be denying your other part well you want me to deny that i'm cherokee because i don't look like what you think a cherokee person is supposed to look like oh but hey they were willing to accept elizabeth warren's fake tale that she was like 152nd something of cherokee to be simply because she had high cheekbones that, that's okay then yeah i guess i just it's just, but, but look, I sometimes tweak these people just because I want to learn exactly what they're thinking. And that part of the conversation with her, it, and, and I see this, not in just her, but with all the millennials that are running around and, with Antifa and Occupy and, and, and Black Lives Matter, they're all saying the same thing. They all believe this nonsense about well, be simply because you don't have a choice of who your 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 or what your lineage is, it's unfair. And since you don't have a choice of where you're born, that's also unfair. Well, somebody should remind them that life, in and of itself, is not fair, and no matter what you do, you're never going to make it fair. Because each and every one of us is different. We have different circumstances, different life experiences, different natural talents, different uh, trained talents. Nothing is going to be fair. Hey, if that's the case, then I think it's unfair that because I'm not tall enough, I can't be a multimillionaire playing basketball. And I don't think it's fair that I don't weigh 250 pounds and I'm not six foot tall, so I can't play professional football and make millions. That's not fair because I love football. 
I love playing it. And it's not fair that I can't play professional football. It's not fair. I should be able to play then. I should be able to earn those millions of dollars. If you're going to talk about fairness, it's not fair that people see me as being too small. It's not fair that people see see me as being too short. I didn't choose it. Hey, if I chose, I would, have, I would have chosen to be at least six foot, not five nine. I would have chosen to at least be bulky and strapping and still be able to move like a football player. You know, I'd be 200 pounds of muscle. I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose to be 5'9", five nine, five nine, 170. No, I wouldn't choose to have a small frame. I want to be bigger. So that's unfair that I can't play professional football because I'm too small. I mean, this, 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 that's how silly that is. Nobody in their right mind is going to say, what do you mean it's unfair that you can't play? You're not good enough or big enough to play football. This has nothing to do with fairness. Now, of course, most of us know that. But this is the idiocy that, that the leftists and the millennials think. This is what they believe. And that, that, is, that is truly sad. It's unfair that we're such a powerful nation. Hey, after all, you know, this nation was built on the backs of immigrants. I've already de- debunked that I don't know how many times. But it's not fair. I mean, no other nation is, it, it has allowed so many immig- immigrants to come together to build such a strong nation, a big, powerful nation in such a short period of time in history. It's unfair. So in order to make things fair, we've got, in sort of, instead of bringing the world up to our standards, it's only fair if we tear ourselves down to their standard. Instead of raising the world standards, we're going to lower the world standards. That's the fair thing to do. I, don't know, I think the fair thing to do is to be able to take people all over the planet uh, and help them utilize uh, their God-given talents and gifts to their fullest and raise the standard of the entire planet, not lower it. Is it fair that I can't play professional football? It might be, but so what? There's other things I can do that other people can't. Is that unfair to them? This is, it's all about this fairness crap because you don't have a choice. I mean, what a bunch of crock. What a crock that is. Um, any case, let's uh, get to the, the, uh, the song today. Now, we're going to do things a little bit differently in the, in the format. This is, this is the time that we're going to, uh, each hour, that we'll do uh, the military tributes. And we have the song. We played the song before, and somebody asked if they they only they only heard part of it, and they wanted to, wanted me to if I would play it again for them because I guess they want. I hope you're listening now, because I'm playing it. You know who you are. I'm playing it especially for you because you wanted somebody that you love that is in the military to hear this song. So I hope you are listening, and I will play the warrior song as our military tribute song for this week.
the bastard. We're going to cut out their living guts and use them to grease the treads of our tanks. We're going to murder those lousy bastards by the bush. Now are they bleeding? I mean, to inflict the grief and the least of me is still out of your reach. The killing machine's gonna do the deed until the river runs dry. I'm a Hello, America. It's me, your history. I remember a time when we thumbed our nose in a king's face and sent him packing. And when fascists and emperors talked a little bit too loud, we showed up, tore their cities to the ground, and then rebuilt them just to prove we could. We put men on the moon, we won a cold war, and we elected fearless leaders who led fearless people. What the hell happened to you, America? Back in my day, we didn't elect a big-eared community organizer. We punched him in the kidney. Maybe it's time you came home, America. Home where you belong. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. This is Free America broadcasting on the Rod Echo Show with a message to all patriots trapped behind the lines in California, New York, Boston, and Chicago. Don't give up, true lovers of America. Even as we speak, moves are being made to drive the invaders back to the land from which they came. Defeat the would-be dictators and lift the chains of tyranny from around your neck. Stay strong. Stay brave. You're not forgotten, and you're not alone. Until next time, patriots, this is Free America signing out. Call Rod now, 603-835-3226. Lines are open. bunch of Republicans and uh, never Trumpers out there just aghast at, at, at Trump working with Democrats to uh, 
uh, to come up with a deal to raise the debt the debt limit, I guess. Um, and like, how can he do? He's, he's making a deal with the Democrat, and, and, and you got even even. I mean, even some of the talk, the big talking heads are like surprised by. Are you kidding me? How can he do this? He's playing with the devil. They don't understand the art of the deal. What have I told people? What have I told you, listeners? I've told you that Trump doesn't take sides other than his side. And his side right now is the side of the American people. And Trump looks at at a deal. A good deal is when he wins or he believes that the American people win. He doesn't care who else wins. That's irrelevant to him. He doesn't care if the Democrats also win or if the Republicans also win. All he cares, it's a win-win for Donald Trump if his side wins. If somebody else wins too, then, then that's just icing on the cake. The art of the deal on Donald if you ever read his books or any of his books about deal making, or if you've ever paid attention or listened to any of his interviews, you would understand and know that fully. Donald Trump does not care if anybody else wins. If a deal is struck and he's the winner, that's a win-win. And if it means that he is going, if Democrats get a small win here, he doesn't give a flip. What he is doing is he's setting up the Republicans right now. He's setting them up. And they're too stupid and too swamp-laden to even realize it. Now, understand that Trump does not like the $20 trillion debt that we're in, and, and, and he's made that clear. And he doesn't like the fact that, that you know, we're going to you know, raise this debt limit to an ungodly level. But the, the, he said this is not the deal that he's making. Everybody thinks this is the deal. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not the deal. I do not believe that this is the deal that Trump is out to make. Oh, no, no, no. This is just laying the groundwork for the ultimate deal. And he is going, I, he is, this is what they were all afraid of. Both sides of the political aisle. This is what they were afraid of. Donald Trump being Donald Trump and being a, actually being able to get things done. Because we hear all these people saying, well, Trump isn't able to get Congress moving, isn't, isn't able to get him, them to do anything. Well, guess what he just did? He just got him moving. It, 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 <laughs> Now the Republicans are sitting around with egg on their face. Yeah, they're going to be pissed at Donald, but they're the ones with egg on their face. And the American people and voter know it. Have you ever thought to yourself, I'm a leftist elite Hollywood a-hole? If so, good news. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College is now open, featuring such courses as Unemployment is not paid vacation. No, Americans don't want to spend $19 for an order of french fries and the ever-popular Shut the Hell Up. Why, just listen to this big-time celebrity endorsement. I'm not Rosie O'Donnell, and I think this school's offensive, sexist, and racist. And I think you're a giant a-hole who needs to shut the hell up. Hey, we teach a course in that. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College, where being an a-hole is not a guarantee you'll be an A student. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. 
For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and always stay in the kitchen when cooking at high temperatures. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov because fire is everyone's fight. And now, a message from the American Migraine Foundation. It's an absolute nightmare. I was terrified. It was like, your head's going to explode. Migraine is a disabling disease. Just all of a sudden couldn't see. Migraine has ruined my life. Absolutely terrifying. There's pain that does not stop. It's a throbbing, pulsing, banging, hammering feeling in your head. 36 million Americans suffer. I started getting migraines around five years old. Just takes over everything. I feel trapped by migraine. It hurts like my head's going to like fall off. And the whole world around you stops. My world has gotten small. You feel like the world's closing in on you. There's nothing you can do. I had spent a year housebound. It's like you're trapped in your head. There's no escaping it. You can't leave your body. Don't suffer alone. Make your move against migraine. Visit AmericanMigraineFoundation.org to find help, learn more, and get connected. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The human voice. It can be sweet as music, powerful as thunder, and so, my fellow Americans, cheerful as laughter. <laughs> but for millions of people, it can also be a sign of COPD. This serious lung disease can make it so hard to breathe, you often can't catch a breath or finish a sentence, let alone carry a tune. And many who have COPD don't even know it. That's where your voice comes in. If you think you or a loved one have symptoms, talk with a health care provider. Early diagnosis can mean better treatments and quality of life. Join us in raising our voices for the millions with COPD who can't. Learn more, breathe better at NIH.gov. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge.
hooded black man on the planet. Rod Eccles. And a good morning to you this Thursday, Thursday morning, September number 7 in the year of our Lord 2017. Welcome to all of you liberty lovers and ecclesiastites all across the globe, as well as you liberal listeners too, and I know you're out there. I know you're out there. I appreciate you taking your t- the time out of your day, your busy day, um, especially, you know, some of you uh, millennials out there. I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy Antifa rioting uh, time to listen, now, even if it's just five minutes. It's a start. Uh, I believe that this program is addictive. And why do I think? Well, it's addictive for me. So if it's addi- and I'm a, I am the least addictive type of person that you'll ever meet. I do not have an addictive personality. I mean, anything that I enjoy, I could stop in a heartbeat without the assistance of drugs or psychiatrist. Or, or what are those, uh, those people called? Uh, the um, hypnotist. I don't need a hypnotist either. I, I do not have a, an addictive personality. Now, some people do. I, I understand that, but that's in their own mind. I think that if you want to, if you, you can change your life in a heartbeat if you want to. It, it all, it's just, it's called, well, self-discipline. Now, am I the most self-disciplined person you will ever meet? Oh, hell no. I could be, I could be extremely anal and disciplined. Um, you know, I, 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 I was, I have a military background, so to speak, and I could do that. It takes some work, but you know, you know, it, what do they say? It takes, it, it takes 21 days to create a new habit, but it takes less than a week to break that habit. It's, 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 well, I should, I think the saying goes, it takes 21 days to create a good habit and seven days to create a bad habit. So it's easier to create a bad habit than it is a good habit. Uh, obviously it takes work, but you know what, you know what they always say, uh, things that are worthwhile and lasting take time. Things that are not take no time at all. Uh, so I have a very, uh, I guess an unaddictive personality. I don't, I don't get, I don't get addicted, but, but then again, I'm also not stupid. I don't tempt fate. I have never tried, at least that I know of any illicit, hard, addictive drug. I don't play with that stuff because even, well, I mean, because then you start getting into physical addiction and that, that, that takes a little bit more power than mental addiction. Uh, A lot of stuff is mental addiction. Um, you know, I hear people talk about caffeine. I, I understand the effects of caffeine, like coffee drinking on people's bodies, but I think most of the, I think most of that is mental. You know, there, there, I mean, I've, I've gone through, through times, extended periods of times where I have, you know, four, five, six cups of coffee. And then, then the next day, stop it just like that and not have coffee for over a week and never get withdrawal symptoms from caffeine or or from uh get a headache and i don't drink soda on occasion rare occasion do i i don't drink a lot of soda so i don't get my caffeine from other areas other than coffee so it's well i i guess i'm is that fair i guess that's unfair it's unfair that i do not have an addictive personality you you know where i get that from I get it from my parents. I think they they instill that they 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 drill those lessons into me. As a child, this is why I also you know I don't understand when when people talk about you know high schoolers and peer pressure. I don't understand people not being able to think for themselves. I just don't understand it. And to me, peer pressure is all about somebody who can't think for themselves. I never gave in to peer pressure. So one thing my parents never had to worry about with me in high school is, is giving in to peer pressure. Uh, my mother even told me that. I, she even said that once. Yeah, I never, never had to worry about, about uh, you know, our kids and peer pressure, especially me. So I never had to worry. worry. You, all, you never did what anybody told you to do. Uh, so, I mean, that, that was one thing they never did. Yeah, sure, I did the stupid, I mean, stupid things and got caught doing it. I remember one time, what were we, sophomores or juniors in high school? Uh, a friend of mine <laughs> brought over a case of beer. My parents were out. 
thought they were going to be gone for longer. So we 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 left briefly to go to the store to get. So we were we had our driver's license. So it was definitely I guess we were juniors. Came home. My parents are home, and the case of beer was that half empty was sitting in the on the kitchen counter. And so yeah, so I've been caught doing stuff like that. Uh, you know, typical teenager stuff. And my, and my dad didn't get all upset. He just looked. He says, "What is this?" And of course, <laughs> I threw my friend under the bus really quick. I said, "Brad brought it over." He said, "Get rid of it." That's all he. He never talked about it again. I didn't get grounded or anything. It just it was <laughs> just being caught was scary enough. And do you realize that I never I never. I never allowed them to bring beer back in my house again after that. Ne- nope. Yeah, sure, I still drank it going out to parties, but never brought it back in the house. Just the fear of being caught was, <laughs> was enough. And it, yeah, I didn't get punished. I didn't get grounded or anything. Just that, that tone in his voice and, and, that, and that look in his eyes, get rid of it. That was it. And, and he said everything he needed to say. I understood it. He said, Get this beer out of my house. Don't ever bring it back. He didn't say all of that stuff, but that's what he said when he said get rid of it. Uh, and I, I've known, you know, many of my high school friends, their parents were similar. They were no-nonsense kind of people, too. I mean, they weren't military. Well, you know, I had a lot of friends with military background, of course, because I was a military brat. But when my father retired... All of, none of my friends, uh, when my father retired where we lived, none of my, my close friends, um, parents were in the military. But none of them were, uh, none of them took any guff either. They were, when it came time to be a parent and be serious, they were parents and they were damn serious. We didn't get into that kind of, tr- we didn't get into trouble, really. Because we had parents that wouldn't put up with that. And we and we had parents that didn't blame everybody else when we did something wrong. So th- th- that's that's missing today, it really is. Um, but yeah, I so th- th- I guess it was just instilled that I grew up to not having an addict. I don't remember my parents being addicted to anything. My dad smoked a pipe most of his adult life, but that's about it. And there were times when, you know, when it, when it came time when the doctor said, you can't smoke anymore, Bob, my, he still had the pipe in his mouth, but he didn't buy any more tobacco. He never smoked them. Uh, so that's, I, I guess that's, he just quit. He didn't, he, they didn't have things like chantix back then in, in the patch when my dad quit smoking a pipe. He just did it. Doctor said, Bob, you can't do it anymore. And Bob said, okay. (laughs) That was it. So I I guess when it comes to that, I am my father's son. And look, I understand that that people, uh, there there are things that they get addicted. But I don't understand some addictions. uh, They're addicted to food. Really? How do you get addicted to food? They're addicted to sex. I, just, I don't understand those kinds of addictions. Those are, those are excuse-laden things for, do, for not having any self-discipline and self-control in my book. Really, that's all it is. There, there isn't going to be a drug that you're going to be able to take to, to cut out or stop or remove your, your own personal desires. I, they, they will try to give you, pump you up with drugs and say, yeah, this will this'll fix you. And it, that's just BS in my book. It really is. Now, sure, there are some, some things that are physically addicting. Your body gets used to it, and you, you're going to go through some withdrawals, maybe even get a headache, get the shakes a little bit. I understand people getting the shakes from withdrawing from caffeine. But uh, a lot of this other stuff is just a bunch of it, – it's to blame something or somebody else. It's never anybody else's fault nowadays. Just like, you know, hey, and this is culminating with the millennial saying, well, it's not, it's, not, not, it's not the, you know, the dreamer's fault that they came here. And it's not the dreamer's fault that they weren't born here. And it's not the dreamer's fault that they didn't – you know, they don't know the country that they came from. And blah, making all these excuses for these people instead of – Instead of holding the people who are actually the dreamers accountable. I don't see anybody holding them accountable. 
Yeah, granted, your parents shoved you on the on the train and they got sent north, and then our president at the time, Barack Obama, let them in, and then let them stay. But afterwards, once they become adults, it's it's up to them. And, and they're here trying to petition. Well, they're not even trying to petition. They're they're demonstrating, and protesting, that we want to uphold our laws. Yeah, I've even seen, you know, the, the funny thing is, is I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures of, of, of demonstrators and protesters of, of illegal immigrants that come into this country and they protest here about how bad we are and how they want, you know, well, I've seen, you know, uh, uh, make America more like Mexico or make America more like Guatemala. Well, if you want America to be more like the country that you fled from, why don't you just go back to the country that you fled from? Isn't that the whole point you you came? At least I thought. Any case, before I get, well, we'll we'll get to that after the after the break. Today's holidays, interesting holidays being celebrated today. Uh, We'll get to that in in a in a few minutes. Um, Speaking of protesting, do you realize what what some people are protesting now? Uh, College activists. Um, are now protesting in various colleges in their cafeterias about the kind of foods that they want. It, it, not not doing what we used to do. I mean, it, you probably yeah, well, I when I went to when I went to the, the, anybody else's cafeteria, college cafeteria, I didn't demand to have certain kinds of foods. Uh, but these they're they're not even requesting. Hey, could you put this in the menu? Uh, I mean, now, sometimes some people would ask. I've heard, I've heard people ask if they could put it on the menu. And, 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 you know, the cook behind the counter would say, you know, we've had a lot of people asking about that. So we're, we're probably going to add it soon. But this is not what millennials are doing today. Oh, no, they're actually marching and protesting about some very precise foods. I, I, they, they want a sushi bar in college. They... they <laughs> Uh, they, they want a, uh, uh, you know, the yogurt bars, you know, frozen froyo bars, and I'm like, are you kidding? You can request it, but to demand it. I mean, how about some really specific foods like hydroponic cilantro? Not just any cilantro, but hydroponic. As students returning to the University of Texas in Austin. We'll have twice as much help wrestling with some of the big questions that col- that colleges pre- uh, present. For instance, does water contain gluten, and is all food genetically modified? There really is that. Are we going to start seeing labels and bottled water that say that state gluten free? Because people don't know water doesn't have gluten in it. Or are, are we going to start adding? <laughs> adding gluten to water so people can then demonstrate and say, we don't want gluten in our water. How about, gen- yeah, I heard somebody say a, a, a few weeks ago, yeah, this water is all natural. I didn't know water H2O wasn't all natural. Is there is there water that's not all natural? Natural, I mean, is, 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 is are we... <laughs> We're going to start labeling things. We're going to start labeling water as GMO simply because evidently millennials, I'm going to say it, millennials, uh, it's a broad umbrella here, but millennials in general are too stupid to realize that H2O water is all natural and naturally gluten free. I really. You're listening to The Rod Eccles Show, the coolest most politically incorrect, conservative black man on the planet. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. <laughs> 603 835 oh, Welcome back. Uh, sorry, some people in the uh, in the, the Spreaker chat room, they, uh, some of these, <laughs> you guys crack me up sometimes, really. You're not supposed to do that. Makes me unprofessional laughing on the air out of, you know, I got to try to explain it to people. I have to explain to people I'm laughing. <laughs> oh, God bless you all. Really. Uh, you, you help make, you help make the show a, a better. Speaking of better, uh, if you, you'll start noticing that we are being, very strict on scheduling. Uh, now, th- this month you'll notice things being moved around. Uh, like this segment, uh, you're going to hear. Now, I'm probably going to move this this segment to the third hour because that's the way the way I'm looking at the schedule. Because before this this w- really was a loosely scheduled program, as you probably know, it was free flowing. But to make it more professional and make it better and more stable, uh, needing to actually put down and print out a, a daily schedule for the program. So we'll probably move this segment to the third hour uh, next week, simply because a lot of the, most of the stuff that we, you know, a lot of things happen already in the second hour. So uh, that can interrupt this schedule. But here's today's hot. I like to keep people informed. You know, why do you, why do you get to tell people this stuff? right? Because I like to, you know, be, it's kind of nice to know that, that I'm paying attention. And I know that you're paying attention and you notice this stuff, and I'm telling you why things are changing, and they're changing for to hopefully make things better. And if the show is better to listen to, that means you're going to listen more often, you're going to get more people to listen. That's the way it works. Constantly improving here uh, on the Rod Echo Show. We're, we're not sitting on our laurels at all. But here is today's holidays. Today is National Acorn Squash Day. Yeah, it's a good day, to, I, I suppose. I mean, acorn squash is is uh, is becoming ripe now. It's it's actually pretty tasty. I like it. It is also National Beer Lovers Day. Uh, it is National Feel the Love Day and National Salami Day. Now, National Salami Day obviously goes very well with National Beer Day. So for lunch, have a salami pastrami sandwich with beer. It's... Um, it's also National Neither Snow Nor Rain Day. 
It's a it's a day that that is a pays tribute to the U.S. postal worker. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow nor dead of night will keep us from our rounds. I think that's how their their slogan goes. But National Neither Snow Nor Rain Day. Well, they better tell that to Hurricane Irma. Um, I think hurricanes keep the postal service from delivering the mail. I think that's about the only, <laughs> that and a tornado. The only, only two things that keep postal workers uh, away from work. Uh, National Grateful Patient Day. Um, yeah, I guess you know, medical patient. You got to be grateful today uh, because it is a National Grateful Patient Day. Today is also something very weird. Today is Google Commemoration Day, observed annually on September 7th. I'm not going to commemorate Google. That's probably the only, this is the only time I'm actually going to mention that. Google, you know what? I'm going to come up with my own day then. It's going to be National Rod Eccles Appreciation Day someday. I don't know. What, what day should I, I choose for that? Um, should it be my birthday? No, no, because then everybody will know it's my birthday. Uh, let me know. What, what day should be? Well, if Google can do it, why can't I do it? Uh, today is also Grandma Moses Day. Now, for those of you who don't know who Grandma Moses is, this is an interesting woman. Grandma Moses, born Anna Mary Robertson, married a man by the name of Moses. Her name was Anna Mary Robertson Moses. She was born September 7th of 1860, and she passed away on December 13th, 1961. Yes, she was 101 years old at the time of her death. She's known by her nickname as Grandma Moses, and she was a renowned American folk artist, and her folk paintings go for some big bucks today. Now, what is not generally known about Grandma Moses to the general public is that this woman didn't start painting until she was 78. She was a senior, senior citizen by by the time that she became famous for her artwork, proving that it's never too late to start a new career. If you like doing something, if you love doing something, it's never too late. I've often said I'm gonna, I'm gonna now now that we can do this. I've often said I'm, I'm just gonna get a get a hold of. And I've heard of somebody doing this, but I thought about doing this before I heard about this person doing this. I was gonna get all the Bob Ross videos until I realized there was over 400 of them, uh, but and just do a Bob Ross painting every week. Once I retire, just do a Bob Ross painting every week until either I finished or I passed away. And see how good of an artist I, I I do like painting and photography. I like photography. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Grandma Moses, 101 years old, started painting when she was 78 and became a, a uh, well-known American folk artist. If you like folk art, then you know who Grandma Moses is. It's a unique form of art. Um, you know, it, it ta- I'm not an art critic. I didn't go to school and take art classes and all that kind of stuff, but I do know a little bit about art, enough to be dangerous, and I know that it has some primitive influences uh, in it, but it is very unique and very Americana, if you will. Those are the holidays for today. Dad, we need to talk. (sighs) Can we just enjoy the drive? If you're not going to listen to me, who will we listen to? Jeffrey. Ah! Marsha Gay Harden, what what Eyes on the road, Dad! What 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 are you doing? What what are you what are you what are you doing in my back seat? How did you get in here? You're getting older. Not that old. Your brain's changing. It's natural. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Honey, I've got experience with this. Jeffrey, brain health is all about making the most of your brain as you age and helping to reduce some of the risks to your brain. Really? Now that's interesting. So you'll talk to her about this, but not me. Marsha Gay Harden? Where did she go? Learn what you can do to help keep your brain healthy at brainhealth.gov. Did she? Did, oh, she didn't say goodbye. I mean, I would Visit brainhealth.gov. Every day, 70,000 puppies or kittens are born in the U.S. Cute, right? What's not cute is that half of all litters are accidents, which leads to millions killed in shelters each year. 
it turns out, those little cuties can get pregnant sooner than you think. But here's the good news. You can stop the accident before it happens. When you bring home a pet, get them fixed at four months old. Prevent more. Fix at month four. Visit fixat4.com for more information. Brought to you by Best Friends Animal Society. There's a threat targeting America. One that's growing fast, but may still be hard to see. Lyme disease. Spread by tiny ticks, often smaller than the head of a pin, this dangerous disease is now more widespread than West Nile, tuberculosis, and HIV-AIDS combined. And if left untreated, it can lead to arthritis, facial paralysis, and even memory and concentration problems, often called brain fog. As the threat of Lyme disease grows to more than 300,000 projected cases each year, it's time for us to target Lyme disease. That means checking for ticks when you've been outside, even in your own backyard. It means seeing a doctor if you experience the symptoms of Lyme disease, which can include joint pain, flu-like symptoms, fever, fatigue, or sometimes a bullseye-shaped rash. Set your sights on stopping Lyme. Learn how you can target Lyme disease at TargetLyme.org. Battles aren't won solely on the field. That's a common misconception. Battles are won within. Over enemies of fear. Enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. Promises to oneself. This is a physical training event. Promises to one's community. Healthy people move to free out of their house. Promises to one's country. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise forever kept. A promise of battles won. We're here early before they wake up. We stay late, we stay informed, we invest in the latest technology. We take the time to train the next generation of doctors and nurses. We work together to make sure we heal their bodies and their minds. We do this not because it's our job, but because this is about our veterans' lives. This is our mission. More than 300,000 of us working as one, together with families and loved ones. No matter where they live in this country, we'll be there. We all come together and stand together to serve our veterans. We stand strong, united. Stand with us in caring for our veterans. Hi, this is Kelsey Grammer. When military service members head into battle, None are expected to face the enemy alone, but many return home and become isolated as they struggle with the visible and invisible wounds of war. It can be difficult knowing how to overcome that challenge and rekindle bonds similar to those formed in the military. Wounded Warrior Project supports these injured veterans through their recoveries by connecting them with fellow warriors and their communities. No one should fight this battle alone. Join us at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Call, 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 call Rod now, 6666 This next story is about is about one of one of the um, left leftist organizations that is quickly becoming one of my favorites to talk about. Um, I, I mean, it, it, it is. It, oh, really? Well, hold on for a second here. I have to acknowledge something. Uh, this is from uh, Kevin Thompson. He's and he's putting this in the uh, in the Spreaker chat room, and. It is he. He has a radio network, uh, uh, internet radio network called Z Talk Radio at ztalkradio.com. This program is heard over on 
ztalkradio.com. And uh, next week is their two-year anniversary. And, uh, you know, it's amazing how, how anything that is conservative when it comes to the talk genre, uh, whether it be inter- internet radio or over-the-air terrestrial radio, or even uh, um, satellite radio, which is becoming very big as well. And I'm not just talking about, um, you know, uh, uh, what, what's the network that, that Howard Stern is on? You know, that satellite type of stuff. But uh, satellite, it, it, cable satellite radio is, is also coming on very strong. Alternative radio to the traditional terrestrial radio is very conservative. And it's very conservative for one reason, because it's work, it works, people listen, and that's what makes them successful. If, if liberalism was what most people believe in, in in this country and wanted to listen to, then the, then the top 10 syndicated shows on radio, uh, talk radio, would be liberal. But they're not. They're all conservative leaning. And this is the problem that the left is having with internet and satellite radio is that to them, it's too conservative. And this is why they were talking about bringing back, you know, the fairness doctrine, all that kind of crap that died. But don't, but trust me, folks, they haven't forgotten it. The, the fairness doctrine laws are still sitting in, in some Democrats desk. Just waiting for the proper time and the proper president to come to, to be put in office again, where they can bring it out, just like they did with the health care thing. Uh, but people want to listen to conservative radio. That's why I've been able to stay on the air since 2009. I mean, uh, sure, I love doing this, but if nobody's going to listen. Then I, I just make it, you know, like a, a, a audio blog or a vlog or something and just call it a day. And I wouldn't do it live every day for three hours every morning. I could find something else to do. But he, his, his network has, a, uh, has his two-year anniversary coming up next week. Congratulations to Kevin and Z Talk Radio at ztalkradio.com. Tune in over there. I've listened to a few programs over there. It's good stuff really is I, I highly recommend it i mean it, 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 the, the point is that they talk, they talk about factual logical historical truthful stuff that's what makes it good not fantasy if i want fantasy then um um uh, you know if i, if I <laughs> i'll just watch a fantasy movie or something seriously uh, any case, congratulations to Z Talk Radio on their their anniversary. Come two years. It, look, it takes a lot of de- uh, dedication and work to put together this program. Now imagine having an entire network where the, where basically almost the entire broadcast day is filled. I I I don't do that for a reason because that's a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication, and I have too many other things to do uh, for me to actually start a, an entire network uh, like that. Now, I've been a part of networks before. It's a lot of work. It really is. Uh, a lot of work and dedication. That means people that are really dedicated, and, and, and they make things work. And those, uh, those who are good at it become successful, and they're, they're able to stay on the air for a long period of time, and uh, Talk Radio is one of them. Uh, so... C- Congratulations uh, uh, over there. We've we've been there with them for two years now. Can't believe it already. Holy crikey, man! Just anniversaries make me feel old. But this is a good one because it's only two. So I guess I'm an I, I, <laughs> I'm still an infant <laughs> over there. <laughs> anyway, uh, my, back to my favorite. Uh, it's uh, becoming one of my favorites to talk about. And that's the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the reason why they're quickly becoming one of my favorites to talk about is because they are the epitome of hypocrisy. Now, the Southern Southern Poverty Law Center is is one of the ultimate uh, groups on the left. I mean, you you really it's it's hard to get more leftist than the Southern Poverty Law Center. I mean, it is possible, but it's you really got to move left. 
And these people, they might as well just come out and admit that they're communist. And seriously. This is also the group that has, that, that's become very well known of late because of their so-called hate map. And also their, their Civil War monument map. They, they put out a map where, where there are Civil War monuments all over the country that need to come down. That, that's separate from their hate map, by the way. Uh, but, but on their hate map, the, the, these places are also included, but they have a separate Civil War monument map uh, where, where the wrong kinds of, of, of people, Confederates, uh, 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 have monuments that need to come down, so they say. Now, this is also a group that claims that, you know, the Civil Poverty Law Center, they were started to uh, great intentions, now, I'll give them that, you know, to help people who could not afford good legal representation as far as their rights were concerned, to help them defend their own rights. Good intentions. But we all know the story of, of the, the, you know, the road of good intentions. Well, this is a road of good intentions that led down that was not really the road of good intentions. It was a, the road of hypocrisy. Now, the Southern po- Poverty Law Center is also one of those groups that, that's, that puts out stuff that makes it seem like, and, 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 it's, and it's truthful, they hate the wealthy. Because, you know, a rich person didn't earn, it, just like Obama, they didn't build that. They didn't earn that. They stole it. Stole it from everybody else. Because, you know, in, the, in this world, in this country, there's only, you know, a trillion dollars floating around. That's it. That, there's no more. No more than that. There's a finite resource and finite value. And the only, reason, the only way for somebody to get more is to take it from somebody else. According to that, that's what they believe. Not that we just create wealth out of thin air. Oh, and wealth is, is, uh, is unlimited. No, they don't believe that. So they, they dislike a lot of what wealthy people do. And what they dislike what a lot of corporations do. And one of the things that they hate, that they seem to always take the task in corporations, uh, especially if they're conservative corporations led by conservative people, not, not, not the wonderful liberals like over at Apple, they park money overseas. Well, last week I brought you the story where, where, you know, one of the things that the Southern Poverty Law Center was involved in during Mitt Romney's time was talking about all this money that Mitt Romney had parked in the Cayman Islands, supposedly, in, in other foreign banks. Well, guess what? Not only does the Southern Poverty Law Center ha- have, have they shipped millions of their dollars uh, to overseas bank, but banks, but... According to the Weekly Standard, the Southern Poverty Law Center also has $69 million parked overseas. Yes, they have, they have assets in places that include the Caymans, the British Virgin Islands, and Bermuda. Not just cash, but physical assets. It invests almost 20% of its nearly $320 million endowment fund in offshore equities and other investments, so says its 2016 annual report. The Alabama-based civil rights organization reports over $69 million of non-U.S. equity funds among the assets comprising a total endowment fund of nearly $320 million. Southern Poverty Law Center. A great and wonderful liberal organization filled with hypocrisy. Right now, folks, I want to bring to you the tribute. We're doing it in a slightly different format. It is self-contained. This is a tribute to, well, I'll, I'll let it speak for itself. And this is about the time every Thursday you're going to hear the tribute to a fallen soldier.
This is the tribute for Charles Lamson, Lance Corporal, United States Marine Corps. Date of service, June 1942. End of watch, August 1943. Charles Chuck Lamson was born in Idaho to a local police officer and his high school sweetheart. Charles grew up in the family home, which his grandfather, Lamson, farmed. Chuck helped his father continue the family tradition of farming by tending to the small herd of milk cows and the small brood of chickens. The milk and eggs were sold in small country stores within the county. When World War II began, Chuck answered the call of his nation by joining the United States Marine Corps. He did this against his mother's wishes, but she came to accept the fact that her son was going off to war and was at the bus station when his father, uh, with his father as Chuck went off to basic training. He was 20 years old. Chuck caught the attention of his training officers and they made him squad leader. Chuck would finish basic training at the top of his squad and then move on to munitions training. When he graduated his training, he was assigned to the war front in the Mediterranean. But first, he would get some much-earned leave time, so he headed back home to visit family and to marry his high school sweetheart, Betty Morgan. During his three weeks' leave, he and Betty honeymooned in Idaho. Chuck promising a real honeymoon in California or Niagara Falls once he returned from the war. Unknown to both Betty and Chuck, the pre-honeymoon celebration left her with child. However, Betty would later learn it was not one child, but two twin boys. Chuck would see battle action in Sicily, Italy. He was known for his dead aim with his rifle, but also how quick he was on his feet when it came to devising ways of blowing up the enemy with various munitions they had on hand. His actions got him promoted to Lance Corporal. His dead aim and quick thinking, however, did not save him from a sniper's bullet. Chuck was struck down during an offensive on August 10, 1943. His twin boys were born in October of 1943. He never got the letter from his wife, Betty, informing him that he was going to be a father when he returned home. The letter, which the granddaughter of Chuck now cherishes, It stated by Betty that the special honeymoon would have to wait until the children were grown. Chuck was laid to rest in Sicily, Italy. His two boys would grow and give Chuck six grandchildren and 13 great-grandchildren. Rest easy, rest in peace. Charles Chuck Lampson, Lance Corporal. United States Marine Corps. I'm not Rod Eccles, and I approve this message. A couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said, I'll bet you're a Nazi. Well, I love America, support the Constitution, and believe in capitalism. So I told him I'm not a Nazi, and I'm not. So what happens? The punk breaks out two windows and pepper sprays an elderly woman in the face. You know, there's one thing about long-haired young people nowadays. They're real assholes. Long-haired young people. 
You suck. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. Warning, listening to the Rod Eccles Show by the Idiot Left may cause outrage, fear, a need for safety pins, and or spaces. If you experience any of these symptoms or are allergic to truth, tune in and learn something. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. That is the call in hotline number. Um, in in an uh, in a bid to continue with the improvements of this program, uh, I know many of you are waiting for the new website that is coming. Uh, this week we will have this weekend we will have the soft reveal of the of the site. Now it's my fault that it's not already up. I asked I was looking at it and I asked for a few tweaks takes a little bit of time to do the tweaking. I can't do the tweaking and this kind of tweaking myself. Uh, so it, it is, uh, but the uh, but the strong opening of it, I guess, you reveal will be uh, next week, Monday or Tuesday is when I'll really announce the whole thing. But um, th- this weekend you'll you'll see the soft. Uh, it probably won't have all the all the the finishing touches this weekend, but by Monday or Tuesday, I'm I'm promised that it will be full fully activated, and uh, it'll be up and running. It's it's cool. It looks pretty cool. I just asked for a few tweaks here and there to make it even just a little bit better. You can always make things a little bit better, so that's what we're doing. Still, at, still, at, it's going to be at rodeckles.net. Um, uh, uh, GoDaddy and and a couple of other, um, what the the people who who register domain names, they've been really hard sending me emails constantly lately, trying to get me to to buy additional. Um, Names, I guess, and I'm just, it, yeah. They they keep expanding them because now now you can get dot anything, just about. Yeah, that you. I'm not gonna go. It's, it starts to get a little expensive when you try doing that. Uh, you know, it's, sure, it might be you know, twenty bucks for two years or something for for this domain dot com, and then another twenty bucks for dot net and dot tv and then dot radio and dot this and dot. That. I'm just not doing that, not falling for that garbage. Um, but we'll stick with .NET. And there's a reason for that, uh, because .NET is known, for, is known to be a little bit different from .com, and, and that's, that's not true anymore, I know. But it, originally it was. So we're, we're, we're sticking with .NET for now. Um, I, I don't foresee me going to any .anything else, and, unless it makes sense. 
I mean, I don't know, maybe in the future I'll go dot .radio, too, or something. But uh, at this particular juncture, no, nah, we're just sticking with .net. And if you're, if you're out there, and, you know, and, and this is what we're doing with a lot of, you know, I, I own more than just Rod Eccles dot .net. Uh, but, um, you know, this is what we're sticking with is, is the dot .net. And, and, you know, we have, we have a couple of dot .coms in there. But, um, yeah, it is what it is, folks. I, I don't – I, I, they, they just they, – they nickel and dime you to death on this stuff. They really do. But, hey, that's fine because, you know, it's free enterprise, and I can choose – uh, not to have that. I, at this particular point in time, I'm not forced by any government law or decree in order to have more than one or any special one. So until then, I'm, as long as I'm free to choose, I'm going to choose what I choose. And, and that's what people should be doing. Having the ability and freedom to choose what they want. Not being forced by government decree, especially in this country. You know, land of the free shouldn't be forced to buy anything that you don't want to buy. I don't care what it is. Yeah, you shouldn't be well, you got to you got to you you're forced to buy car insurance cuz you should have well. No. I'm going to go on the on on, a, on record and say no. And I realize that what 40 48 states require you to have uh automobile insurance and I, and, and many of those have this no fault crap require you to have that. I mean, no. Should not. I mean, you're a, you're a fool if you don't if you're not covered. But no, it, it, it's it's just another way to to tax you, and it's another way to abscond taxes and, and money from from the people. Whenever you're forced to buy something, you better believe it is not necessarily for the good of society, but government has its hand in it somehow, some way, and is forcing you to buy it so they get money from you. It's a way that they hide taxes. Which is why, you know, I, you know, taxes are a huge issue. And when you, when you get a society that is, that is overtaxed, it begins to decline. And this is one of the things that is big right now that Congress just doesn't seem to get about taxes. And which is why Trump needs to start really, really, really pushing tax reform. Because we need tax relief. Today, there's a beer for everyone. Hey, me and the guys are going out for a beer. You want to come along? Nah, I got a lot of data to enter into the computer tonight. Now, there's a brew for the future. Want me to bring you something back? Thanks, but I got some right here. Microsoft Brew. You got a beer tap on your computer? With a head so thick, you can float a mouse on it. Let me get this straight. You make your own beer with the computer? With the right software, you can do anything. Microsoft Brew. Here, I call this one Windows 95. I don't know. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And if you got to get there quicker, try the new ISDN malt liquor. When I found out I had atrial fibrillation, a serious but highly treatable heart condition, first thing I thought of was who would take care of my wife and children if anything were to happen to me? My doctor recommended Provactin. I had a lot of questions, so I did some research. It turns out Provactin is the number one recommended drug for Crohn's disease. I think my doctor's trying to kill me and steal my wife. Doctors. They'll stop at nothing to get your wife. And now, a message from the American Migraine Foundation. It's an absolute nightmare. I was terrified. It was like, your head's going to explode. Migraine is a disabling disease. Just all of a sudden couldn't see. Migraine has ruined my life. Absolutely terrifying. There's pain that does not stop. It's a throbbing, pulsing, banging, hammering feeling in your head. 36 million Americans suffer. I started getting migraines around five years old. Just takes over everything. I feel trapped by migraine. It hurts like my head's gonna like fall off. And the whole world around you stops. My world has gotten small. You feel like the world's closing in on you. There's nothing you can do. I had spent a year housebound. It's like you're trapped in your head. There's no escaping it. You can't leave your body. Don't suffer alone. Make your move against migraine. Visit AmericanMigraineFoundation.org to find help, learn more, and get connected. 
The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The human voice. It can be sweet as music, powerful as thunder, and so, my fellow Americans, cheerful as laughter. <laughs> But for millions of people, it can also be a sign of COPD. This serious lung disease can make it so hard to breathe. You often can't catch a breath or finish a sentence, let alone carry a tune. And many who have COPD don't even know it. That's where your voice comes in. If you think you or a loved one have symptoms, talk with a healthcare provider. Early diagnosis can mean better treatments and quality of life. Join us in raising our voices for the millions with COPD who can't. Learn more, breathe better at nih.gov. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a nonprofit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals. Because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. It's 
time to bring the rain. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Already past the three hours of internet talk radio right here on the Rod Eccles Show. Welcome back. It is Thursday, Thursday, September number seven in the year of our Lord 2017. Welcome to you liberty lovers and ecclesiastites all across the globe as well as you newbies out there and you libs that tune in. And again, I know that you listen because some of the things that you, you tell me or you say to me, you, you retort to me uh, on social media, you can only know... If you listen, or maybe you, uh, maybe somebody else listened and they told you something out of context, which is, that, that's a possibility too. But I, I know you're listening. Thank you for listening. You're only making the show better. Really, you do. Thank you. Uh, it is also Military Tribute Thursday, and we have the military report coming up this hour as well. On to the next bit here. And it's not about the hurricane, although that, that will come into play at, at some point. Um, the budget deal, it, well, the, the, the debt raise deal is including stuff for Hurricane Irma. And uh, we don't even know what, what Hurricane Irma is going to do. Um, but, there, but there are some things that are not in, in, involved or included in this debt budget thing. Noticeably absent, and that is the border wall. Now, now they've they've already you know put forth the funds to build uh, what is it? They're going to be build six different prototypes. I I don't know why you got to build a prototype. I, I mean, once once these prototypes are, where are they going to build the prototypes? And what happens? You know. With the five that are not chosen, are they going to use different ones in different areas? I guess that's what they're going to do. They're going to use different ones in different areas along the border. And is it how long is it? Like 2,500 miles, 2,000 miles? It's not. I know a lot of people think it's going to be like the Berlin Wall for 2,000 miles or no. It's not going. To, the border wall is not going to uh, traverse the entire. In fact, it can't um, tra- traverse the entire. Um, uh, border. It, 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 some some places are just inhospitable and uh, really inhospitable. And if you cross in those areas and you make it, well, um, good for you, good on you, as uh, Australians would say. But th- there is no money involved in that, and for the real wall, not 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 the prototypes. So they they release some money for prototypes to be to be built, but there's no money for the real actual. You know, once we, we pick which type of wall, style of wall goes where, um, there's no money for that. And the House Majority Leader, Kevin McCarthy, is saying that Republicans will punt the wall fight to December. Now, even though you're not seeing this, and even, you're really not, because the lamestream media isn't really reporting on this, but you're really not, also, you know, talking about being presidential, you don't see Trump throwing a tirade. Now, you know inside the man is fuming because we are the people. We're fuming about this. The GOP is currently livid at Trump for cutting a deal with the Democrats, but hey, because they're not doing a damn thing. They're not moving on just about, you know, I would 98% of, of Trump's uh, um, promises and his agenda is not being acted upon. I mean, for Christ, the biggest thing on his list, they could not even move forward. Now, of course, he wasn't going to get any Democrat help in, in removing and eliminating uh, Obamacare. 
That was expected. What was not expected by many of many people in the country was that the GOP would not be having the numbers that they have in Congress wouldn't be able to pull it off. And this is why I keep telling you that the Republicans, the blue bloods, the current stock of Republicans, most of them are not on the side of the, they're not really conservative. They're not true constitutional conservatives and they're not on the side of their, of their, their constituents. I mean, this, this is just, it's insanity. And so when, when Trump couldn't make a deal, get them to get off their, their collective arses and get something done, even with this the, the raising the debt limit, what did he do? He turned to some Democrats who were open to the idea and cut a deal with them. Now, I'm sorry, if I am trying to work with a group of people and I can't get done what I want or need to get done, then I'm going to work with a different group of people. That's that's what's naturally done in the real world. But in Washington, D.C., in the swamp, I guess you never, ever cross uh, your party. You never cross. Well, I mean, well, why not? Look, Trump crossed the aisle, didn't he? He did. Isn't that what John McCain always talks about? You know, hey, isn't that isn't that what a lot of the Republican um uh, candidates talked about yeah i'll be able to work with the democrats i'll be able to walk across the aisle and work with them so trump does it and they throw a hissy fit think about that for a second folks you had people like mccain and 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 Kasich and bush and 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 uh, uh what's the southern gentleman's name down there um You had all of these candidates talking about, well, you know, they have the experience to work across the aisle and cross the aisle and make deals with them because you need the Democrats. And and only he, you know, this this candidate, this candidate says only I can do this. I've got the experience to do it. And another candidate says, I've got the experience to do it. I've worked with them all the time. I've crossed the aisle all the time. That's what they kept telling us. That's what they campaigned on. Trump does it. And now they're ticked at him for it. And now they're worried because of of Trump's little flirtation with the Democrats on this one item. It's going to make them nervous about 2018. Well, it should make you nervous about 2018. Because you kept telling us that you could work with them across the aisle to come up with something, compromises that actually work for the American people, and you haven't done it. Even though you, every campaign season, you tell us that's what you can do. And that's what you have done. And so now the president does it and you want to be livid? Well, it tells the American people, those people who voted for you in the first place, that you really are not about what's best for this country and what's best for the American people. That you're a bunch of little children who are throwing nothing but hissy fits constantly. Because Trump is an outsider. He's not one of you. Well, too damn bad. He's the, the reason why we put somebody who's not one of you in office is because those of you that we keep putting in office don't do what we want you to do and don't get the job done. So we put somebody in a ho- office who's going to get the job done by hook or by crook. And if that means that he crosses the aisle to start getting things in motion, then so be it. That's what we, that's what we hired Trump for. We hired him to get things done, not talk rhetoric all the time and give excuses about, by, you know, well, we couldn't, we couldn't get, uh, uh, we, we, we couldn't get uh, the repeal done because we don't have 60 votes. We got 52 and you couldn't even garner that. I mean, what is the, what is, what happens if we give the Republicans 59 or 60 votes in, in the Senate? What happens if we send 60 Republicans there and they still don't get things done? Then what are they going to? Because what did they kept saying? Well, you know, we can't get anything done because we're in the minority. We don't have any power in the in, in the you know in the presidency. That's a Democrat, and the, the House is their Democrat led, and the, the Senate's Democrat led. Give us a House at least, and we'll be able to do something. We gave you the House overwhelmingly. 
the biggest nonviolent transfer of power in probably human history in 2010 and 2012. Gave you the, gave you the house. You didn't do anything. Because you said, well, you know, it's only the House. We, we send all these bills from the House and we pass them and send them up to the Senate and we can't get anything done. We need the Senate. So what do we do? We give you the Senate. And then you tell us, well, you know what? We, the president's only going to veto it. We don't have the numbers to override the veto. So we need the, we need the presidency too. So we give you the Senate, the House, and the presidency. And now you're telling us you can't get anything done because you don't have 60 votes in the Senate. So what is going to be the excuse when you fail to do things that we want you to do when we give you 60 votes? You're running running out of excuses, McConnell. I think the time for excuses is over. You cannot be telling us that you're going to punt the wall fight to December. You know what that means? It's not going to happen in December either. I'm telling you right now that unless we make some changes in the, in Congress in 2018, the Republicans, not even have to worry about the Democrats, the Republicans are going to block the wall. The Republicans, unless we make some serious changes in 2018 are going to block serious, real, logical tax reform. The Republicans will give us stuff we don't want, like amnesty. I guarantee you that if they send the bill up for amnesty up to President Trump and he vetoes it, they'll find the votes to override it. Guarantee you. So this whole notion that he's flirting with Democrats is to try to get you Republicans to start realizing that we're tired of your excuses. We're tired of your BS. And if you, under the sound of my voice, if you're tired of it too, then it's time that you stop reelecting the same people over and over again who block everything. You know, along with sending Trump to the White House, to the Oval Office, we were also sending a message to the Republicans, look, we've given you just about everything that you've asked for. Now let's start moving forward and doing something. At least do something. They haven't done diddly. They haven't done anything. Sure, we have a few loud voices, you know, uh, uh, well, Cruz hasn't been very, very loud, but we have Cruz. You have Rand Paul. He's probably the biggest voice on our side right now. But for the most part, you, I mean, I mean, there have even been times when Lindsey Graham, when, when we think there's a little bit of light finally coming on in Lindsey Graham, and he'll say, well, geez, you know, Trump is right on this and Trump is right on that. Even Lindsey Graham is, is coming around and saying a few, a few things in favor of the president. Because he understands it. He gets it finally. He's starting to get it. The rest of you yahoos down there don't seem to get it. Because you're too damn selfish and you're worried about your own money and your own power. Uh, you know, there was a meme that was going around. It talked about, you know... Um, uh, the number of people in poverty in this country and the number of, of wealthy people in the general, po- what we consider to be millionaires and, and, and wealthy people, this is like less than 5% of the general population is are millionaires. Over 50% of Congress is millionaires. I think the American people need to start getting really, really upset and tired of sending people to Congress who are not millionaires and then co- and having them come back home millionaires. That's got to stop. And the only way, well, I mean, I know people are talking about term limits, but let's face it, we're not going to get term limits because these people are not going to term limit themselves out of jobs and prestige and power. They're not going to do it. You know, they'll, they'll be for term limits for somebody else, but not for them. But I don't know what, it's, what it is. Is it, is it going to take for there to be a, revol- a real, re- you know, we had a revolution in the White House, you know, for president. Are we going to have, and we had a revolution in Congress in the, in, in the House. Are we going to get a full 
full-blown revolution in the, in the House and the Senate in 2018 because the GOP are being sticks in the swamp that don't want to give, give up their power. We need to start turning out these incumbents and putting people in there who are really going to do something. And if we give them a term, well, in the House, if we give them a term or two terms and they don't do anything, put somebody else in there. We got to stop this regurgitating the same crap over and over again. Otherwise, we're never going to get the wall built or tax reform. Ooh, love hurts. Yes, love hurts. It can hurt emotionally, but more important, it can also hurt you physically. It can hurt you in a way which nobody who owns a hot tub and lives in California can afford to be unaware of. Yes, I'm talking about California hot tub rectal gonorrhea. This painful and curable disease can make an enjoyable soak in a hot tub with family, friends, and dog into a literally unforgettable experience. If you catch California hot tub rectal gonorrhea, not only will you walk around feeling like you're about to pass a twisted sardine can lid, you'll also smell like a pile of burning tractor tires. So don't jump out of the frying pan and into the hot tub, because if you get California hot tub rectal gonorrhea, it'll really burn your ass. This has been a public service message brought to you by the Citizens Against CHTRG Foundation. California hot tub rectal gonorrhea. We're not going to take it sitting down. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. Sticking with the wall here. Now, now you got to understand, just building the wall is not going to be enough. It has to be supported. And, and that also is going to take some money. Uh, let me just, well, let me give you an example, a visual example. Game of Thrones. In the North Country in Game of Thrones, there's this gigantic 300-foot-tall ice wall from basically coast to coast. Now, I don't, I don't know how long the wall actually is. But, and I don't know how long it's been there. I think 700 plus years the, that that wall of ice has been there. But the problem is, is that in the last episode, and if you haven't seen the last episode, then you probably shouldn't listen to this part. The last episode of this, the season finale, uh, a part of the wall was breached, destroyed. It came down. The enemy took it down. And the enemy was able to do that because throughout time, they got too used to the wall being there and not being manned. They weren't properly manning it. So it came down because it was at a section of the wall 
that was not properly manned. So we've got to man it, too, either actually having human eyeballs there or electronic devices that monitor it. So that's also you just can't. I get the fact you just can't throw up a wall and say, oh, that's going to work. Uh, n- n- no, it, it, it doesn't work just by throwing up a wall. It's got to be it's got to be a combination of things. You got to have a physical barrier, but humans being humans, you know, we're, we're very adept and we can adapt to our, our surroundings and we're very ingenuitive. Uh, you know, we can breach a physical barrier. Which is why you got to have some somebody or something there to augment the physical barrier. That means human beings. In that when you don't properly man something and don't properly have a backup system or an augmented system, that that one particular system is not going to always work. It's going to be breached. Game of Thrones is a perfect example of that. I mean, look at the Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall was never unmanned. I mean, it was a big, imposing physical barrier, but they had men manning that wall. So it was a two-prong approach. And this is something that I don't think the GOP is actually getting either. You got all these wonderful, they're listening to the wonderful liberals, oh, the, wall, the wall won't work. Walls work everywhere that they're tried as long as there's Look, the reason why the Great Wall of China didn't work as well as it could have is because it wasn't properly manned. You give somebody the time to to inspect it, to go under it, through it, or over it, and they're going to do it. And the only way you stop them from going under it, over it, or through it is by preventing them from doing that, and that takes people power. Whether they have arrows or guns, it doesn't matter, even if it's just hot oil. Uh, castles, castles of old, at great walls. But if they weren't properly manned, what happened to those, ca- those castle walls didn't mean anything. All it did was just slow the enemy down a little bit. They still got through. They had to be manned. And so all of that has to come, to fr- come together. Walls work. Not just a wall by itself, but the whole, it's a system. The physical barrier of the actual brick and mortar or steel wall is just one part of the system. And you, uh, you know that they're going to say, okay, well, we found the money to build the wall, but now we don't have the money to man it. Well, that's just a waste of money. And material and resources. And that's exactly what, I'm afraid that's exactly what they're, they're going to finally come around, you know, in like 2018 or 2019 and say, okay, yeah, we'll build the wall. But that's it. No money for, you know, beefing it up with, uh, with manpower or electronic devices. Nah, we don't have that money. But we got money to, to give away. That's for, you know, to, to, to the illegals that we want to keep out. Oh, we got money to give it to them. You know, get, let, yeah, let's just give DACA, re, you know, DACA kids uh, free college and free room and board and, and uh, all bunch of free stuff. Why? Well, because it's not fair. They didn't, they didn't choose to be born in a terrible country. And they didn't choose to be put on a train and head north. We got to give them everything for free. They can't even speak their own home language. I bet you more than 90% of them can speak their own home language if they really want to. You might be surprised to learn who has Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Nearly 1 in 200 Americans are suffering with a debilitating pain and constant disruption of these inflammatory bowel diseases, or IBD. Chances are you know someone with IBD. For example, your neighbor or coworker. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation was created to help patients cope and to find a cure. People with IBD can't wait. Won't you help someone you know? Visit www.escapethestall.com today. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. But most people don't know they are infected. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you can still have hepatitis C, a serious liver disease that often has no symptoms. In fact, people can live with hepatitis C for decades without feeling or looking sick. But over time... Hepatitis C can cause serious health problems, including liver damage, liver failure, or even liver cancer. Getting tested is the only way to know if you're infected with hepatitis C. 
That's why the CDC recommends everyone born from 1945 to 1965 get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments are available that can cure this disease. So talk to your doctor about getting tested. It could save your life. A message from the CDC. Everyone is talking about health care these days. America spends twice that of other developed countries on our health care system, yet our health ranks near the bottom. How can we stop spending so much and getting so little? Shifting to a system based on primary care can help fix the problem. Patients with a primary care doctor live longer, healthier lives and are less likely to suffer from cancer, heart disease, or stroke. Primary care that is comprehensive and coordinated also saves money. Patients who have a primary care doctor spend 30% less on health care than patients who don't. States with a high number of primary care doctors have lower health care costs and higher quality care. Primary care can help make America healthy again. To learn more about the benefits of primary care, visit www.healthisprimary.org. This message is brought to you by America's Family Physicians. It's been called shell shock, war neurosis, and battle fatigue. Today, we call it post-traumatic stress disorder, and it affects one out of every five warriors returning from battle in Iraq and Afghanistan. The Wounded Warrior Project offers comfort and support for warriors with PTSD and all other scars of war, whether those scars are visible or hidden. Find out how to help, because for warriors, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. Please visit WoundedWarriorProject.org. The Amazon's rainforest is being cut down so fast that by 2030, 55% of it could be completely wiped out. The Earth's forests can't speak up when they need help, but we can. Be the voice for those who have no voice. Visit WorldWildlife.org. There's a threat targeting America. One that's growing fast, but may still be hard to see. Lyme disease. Spread by tiny ticks, often smaller than the head of a pin, this dangerous disease is now more widespread than West Nile, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS combined. And if left untreated, it can lead to arthritis, facial paralysis, and even memory and concentration problems, often called brain fog. As the threat of Lyme disease grows to more than 300,000 projected cases each year, it's time for us to target Lyme disease. That means checking for ticks when you've been outside, even in your own backyard. It means seeing a doctor if you experience the symptoms of Lyme disease, which can include joint pain, flu-like symptoms, fever, fatigue, or sometimes a bullseye-shaped rash. Set your sights on stopping Lyme. Learn how you can target Lyme disease at TargetLyme.org. Dad, we need to talk. Can we just enjoy the drive? If you're not going to listen to me, who will we listen to? Jeffrey. Ah! Marsha Gay Harden, what, what? Eyes on the road, Dad. What, 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 what are you doing? What, what are you, what are you, what are you doing in my back seat? How did you get in here? You're getting older. Not that old. Your brain's changing. It's natural. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Honey, I've got experience with this. Jeffrey, brain health is all about making the most of your brain as you age and helping to reduce some of the risks to your brain. Really? Now that's interesting. So, you'll talk to her about this, but not me. Marsha Gay Harden? Where did she go? Learn what you can do to help keep your brain healthy at brainhealth.gov. Did she... Did, oh, she didn't say goodbye. I mean, I would have... Visit brainhealth.gov.
some more Hurricane Irma news here. Not not the the uh, the total end of the world destruction type of stuff that you're you're probably getting on a, on a on a half hourly basis now from the lamestream media. Uh, yeah, this is it, Hurricane Irma is probably going to be one for the history books. Well, and frankly, every hurricane is one for the history books. It is history. Uh, it, it, is it just because of the size or the strength of the storm? Yeah, that's what they're what they're saying, really. But the, the reality is, is that every hurricane is one for the history books. It's a it's part of history. It's a devastating event that anybody who lives through it is never going to forget. Um, so it's going to be historical. Uh, Harvey's going to be is historical. Um, and, and, you know, it wasn't Category 5. But here's something different from the Orlando Sentinel. A Florida sheriff threatens to arrest fugitives that come to shelters. Yes, there's going to be sworn law enforcement officers at every shelter that they can possibly man in Florida. And uh, um, uh, in this county, at least, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd is threatening to jail wanted people seeking shelter due to Hurricane Irma. Uh, now, this is a guy who's, who's known for his outspoken comments, and he made the threat in a series of posts to Twitter, of all places. He says, if you go to a shelter for Irma and you have a warrant, we'll gladly escort you to the safe and secure shelter called the Polk County Jail. And uh, he's, this is a sheriff that has 66,000 followers on Twitter. <laughs> I don't see a problem with that. Good, 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 good. It's not fair. You can't. Yeah, you can do that. You know, let's look. They've they've done it other. You know, I've seen uh, police departments do it in different ways. You ever remit, I don't know if they still do this as much. Maybe criminals are, are finally catching wind of this. But uh, there was a. This was big in the nineties. Uh, they would they would send people. Uh, people, you know, they had their addresses. And they had a hard time, you know, catching them for whatever reason. Maybe they just didn't have the manpower at the time to go round everybody up. That, so they would send them these these official looking notices telling them that they won a prize, and that all they had to do was, you know, just like a lottery ticket. You have to go and turn in a lottery ticket in order to get this prize, and it was a valuable prize that they that they were told that they won. You know, it could have been a TV or something, uh, something that would entice people. So all they had to do to, to do because they were in, they entered they entered because people did this all the time you know you put stuff in a in a box in a mall or a store and you end up getting a phone call or a letter or something telling you that you that you know you you won the prize and if, usually of course you had to go and sit through a through a high pressure sales pitch but you know so these people would get these things that that would say you won a prize so the the way to collect your prize because it was only for the name person, you just had to come down with the ticket that was included and, and, you know, prove that you're the recipient, you're the proper person and claim your prize. Well, a lot of these jokers, because they were stupid, greedy people, and these work, these work so well that they continue doing this over and over again in many parts of the country. And I think the reason why maybe they stopped because it stopped working because newscasts, even like 2020, did exposés on this. But these these wanted people, wanted for various things, from, from serious crimes to, you know, just not, not paying child support. They would go to claim their prize because they were stupid and greedy. Not even, think, well, geez, you know, this is kind of a weird place to go and collect your prize. And they'd show up, prove who they were. And be and be arrested. And this is your prize. Oh no, you don't get the TV, but you. <laughs> so, so this is they. We've done this before, and now this Polk County Sheriff is saying, "Well, hey, you know, if you get, we're going to be checking IDs. You know, when you come to shelters, and if we find that you're wanted, there's a warrant out for you. Well, you know, we'll we'll give you free shelter." In jail. I I don't see a problem with that. 
Now, granted, uh, there might be some people that, that are surprised to, to know and find out that they have a warrant out for their arrest, but most people, most criminals know, which is why they run. Most people that have a warrant out know that they have a warrant out for them. I mean, how many times have you ever watched Dog the Bounty Hunter? And, and they find some of these people and, and they say, yeah, yeah, I know I had it, but, uh, you know, I, I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that or I didn't want to take care of it then. And blah. they give you the sob story about every excuse in the book by they knew that there was a warrant out for them. Excuse me. But they didn't have a way of taking care of it other than turning themselves in. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, you, you go through the process of being arrested and then, then whatever you have to go through, that's what you go through to clear it up. The warrant is just the start of the whole legal process. It, but, yeah, there are some people that may honestly not know. Okay, that's going to be a shock for those very rare few people. But most people know, which is why they avoid police wherever they go. Because they know. So now they're being told, well, if you, hey, if you, if you come to <laughs> the shelter... He's given notice. He's given the public notice that this is so. It's not good. It should not be a surprise to anybody. Well, well, that's going to cause people to stay and, and put lives in danger. Well, yeah, that that may well that may be. But if you you, you know the uh, police and and first responders are saying when things get too bad, we're not sending out first responders to save your butt. And 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 they shouldn't. If you're being told that it's going to be bad. And it's going to be very bad. You need to get out. And don't put somebody else's, else's life in danger because you were, you were being stupid. I, again, I, you know, I don't have any problem with that either. You know, people got to take responsibility for themselves and their own actions at some point. I mean, honestly. So this sheriff is, is ba I wonder how many, I, I think what we're, uh, what I, we're probably not going to get the numbers, but I am interested to hear the numbers at the end of the storm, how many people um, <laughs> were captured at these, at these shows. It's, it is kind of funny. It really is. Well, it's not funny if you're the one being arrested. Well, again, you know, you're the one that did the crime. You're the one not paying child support, so come on. you got to expect this kind of stuff. You know, take some responsibility for your own actions. Hey, maybe you didn't choose to be born in Mexico or Guatemala or, or, or East Kathmandu, but you did choose to come across the border illegally. You did choose to break the law, and you did choose, once you broke the law, to stay here. No matter what age you were when you first came here, once you became an adult, you became fully responsible for your own actions, and you stayed instead of going back or instead of going through the proper process because most of those dreamers don't go through any kind of process whatsoever to stay here legally. They just expect us to come up with some sort of amnesty program that's going to allow them to stay. They think if they, if they protest long enough and loud enough, they're going to get what they want instead of going through the actual current process. Take responsibility for your actions. If you're 18 or older and you're a dreamer and you don't do anything to try to legally stay here, then you should be sent back. Plain and simple. Take responsibility for your own actions. However, 15 states, including California, have filed suit against the president uh, for his rescinding of Obama's executive order. Now, this is... Uh, I'm getting tired of this. The president has the, has the authority to issue certain kinds of executive orders. What he doesn't have the authority to do is make a law. Now, executive order uh, that comes in the form of screening people who want to enter the country, that he can do. That's not a law. That's a process. An executive order just rewriting the immigration laws without Congress, that's not constitutional. So an executive order rescinding an unconstitutional executive order, there's nothing to sue on. We should have been suing out the wazoo when Obama first issued the stupid executive order. 
But no, Republic, the GOP didn't do that. Nobody in the GOP did that. And so we, we have this stupid thing called, you know, the DACA dreamer thing. And now Trump's saying, well, you know, this, this is unconstitutional. Let's just get rid of it. So executive order resends this executive order. Now people are flipping out. And they want to sue the president over it? Give me a break. This enough's enough. This should not even, even get anywhere near close. Should not get anywhere near a federal court. Even a liberal judge should, should just say, you know what? You, you know, this whole thing about standing, you know, when it comes to unconstitutional laws, if the president fixes an unconstitutional order, you have no standing whatsoever to challenge that. You can't sue to continue breaking the law. I mean, that's what it basically is. You have these governors of these states who now want to sue the federal government to continue breaking the law. You know, they're they're supposed to be upholding the law. And now they're basically they are suing to break the law, to be given the ability to break the law. That's what they're saying. Uh, and, And not even the state, actually. So the governors aren't even suing for, for the federal government uh, for the state to be able to break. The, no, 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 no. They want individuals who aren't even citizens to be able to break the law. That's what they're suing for. Do you folks realize that in, in your state? California is uh, decided to file a separate suit on immigration protections. I, he, 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 all, all he did was end an unconstitutional executive order. And returned it to constitutionality by saying, okay, Congress, do your job. Come up with a law that I can sign. Or come up with a law that I'm willing to sign. Or if I veto it, then, you know, constitutionally override my veto. That's it. So the the governors of these states are not only suing to allow people who aren't even citizens to be able to legally continue to break the law but they also want to want to shield congress from actually doing their constitutional duty will they start suing over budgets federal budgets next i mean really when is this 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 ill-gotten legal crap gonna end the first 150 years of this country, I, I, all of the founders and those people in the first, uh, first 150 years, they have got to be looking down up, us, uh, up on us thinking, what have we given them? They can't keep this experiment going. We gave them the instrument where they could govern themselves effectively and efficiently, and they turn it on its head They've shredded our gift to them. I mean, honestly. If you really break it down to its simplest form, and that's what everything should be broken down to, to its simplest form. The simplest form is basically what I just said. You've got governors and attorney, attorneys general of 15 states that are suing the government. The suing the federal government in order to somehow allow non-citizen criminals to continue to legally break the law, as well as shield Congress from actually doing their constitutional duty. I, how, how else is there to put it? There is no other way to put that, really. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and Samuel Rosette Jr. dot com. To put it more simply, this is how it really is. You have those charged with upholding the law, because governors and attorneys generals, their job is to uphold the law. Um, you, You have those who are charged with upholding the law, petitioning the court, and the court is supposed to also uphold the law. So they're petitioning one that law enforcement agency basically is petitioning another law enforcement agency to to allow them to give permission to non-citizens to break the law that is what that's what it is in its simplest form you know one, one group of people who are supposed to be upholding the law asking another group of people who are who are there to uphold the law to give them permission to break the law Constitutional law, all right, at that. So that, that's what it really is. Um, I have a story here out of uh, New York and New Jersey. The parents of students at a New Jersey high school were ordered to get their children's blood and urine tested after a single can of beer was discovered at a football game. The can of beer reportedly landed on the ground and was spotted by a school official during a game at Randolph High School in New Jersey on Friday night. So they sent out these orders to some 75 students. Now, <laughs> it's unclear if the can was thrown or it fell, if somebody dropped it, but it came from the bleachers filled with students, according to a letter from the Randolph Superintendent Jennifer Fano, uh, who said some of the students appeared drunk and that several additional open containers of alcohol were later discovered. So why didn't you test those who appeared to be drunk? So instead, you're going to order parents to have all of their kids tested? That, that, that I, again, um, now this is, this is an unconstitutional, there's, you, are, do you suspect all 75 of these kids, uh, more than 75 of these kids of drinking an alcoholic beverage? <laughs> and, and of course, you know, the school isn't going to pay for this either, right? Uh, parents are being told, well, you know, you, you're going to have to pay for it. You're going to have to get your kid tested. And uh, so they sent out this order. And after the can of beer was found, about 75 students who were in the bleachers were taken to classrooms as school officials contacted parents so they could pick them up. Each student was given a form, a rule-out test requiring blood and urine samples. Parents were given two hours to get the health facilities in Morristown and Dover and Denville Uh, New Jersey, so their children could be screened. They face suspension from school if they didn't complete the screening. So they're going to be punished for something maybe they didn't even do. 
Now, according to this, district policy and regulation states that failure to comply with a screening is deemed a positive test result and will result in suspension from school. How about parents just school the bejesus out of these, uh, uh, the parents school, uh, sue the bejesus out of the school? That's anti-constitutional. Just because one student or two students or a few students you suspect, you suspect, then you get the ones that you suspect were drunk or had imbibed illegally, and you test them. You do not threaten people. That's ridiculous. Well, you don't. Okay. Every game from now on, we see one can of beer anywhere. We're going to test the entire student population that was there. And if you don't get tested, then we're going to suspend you. That's a bunch of BS. They can't do that. But I bet you these parents will go along with it. Uh, And finally today... Ah, the blame game continues out in in left in our leftist society. Now it it has even seeped into Hollywood. As you probably know, Hollywood had a terrible summer uh, at the movies. Uh, their box office receipts were down a whopping fifteen percent. Uh, uh, you have to go back some twenty years to find a a, a year that was this bad. For Hollywood, and uh, it was so bad that that America's biggest three theaters lost a collective four billion in market value since May. So between May, uh, you know, Memorial Day in May and and Labor Day this year, the the re- receipts were down fifteen percent. And it isn't because they had they they released they made and released bad movies. No, 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 no. Yeah, you know, somebody has to be at fault other than the studios and the actors for this. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, Hollywood is blaming, get this now, Hollywood is blaming a single website, Rotten Tomatoes, because Rotten Tomatoes uh, tells you about all the diff- different wonderful uh, movies that, that are out there, and uh, they tell you what they think about them. They give them Rotten Tomatoes, and, they're rotten, and they gave all these movies poor reviews. So they're saying, Hollywood is saying, it's not because we made bad movies, it's because Rotten, the website Rotten Tomatoes said our movies were bad. So people listen to Rotten Tomatoes, and <laughs> I bet, uh, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if Hollywood, uh, all the studios in Hollywood get together and decide to sue Rotten Tomatoes. It's not going to help them make better movies, they're just going to continue making bad ones. But it's Rotten Tomatoes' fault. Yes. Liberalism runs amok in the USA. Well, we're out of time for today. Tomorrow, we'll be back in 21 hours with Freedom Friday, Open Mic Friday. So be here for that. Just about anything goes. Until then, have a wonderful Thursday afternoon. I'm Rod Eccles. Thanks for listening. I'm out. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A shameless politician always plays her cards right. Got a crew for the fight on the airwaves. Lap dogs in the press keep the mouths tight. Cause the Clinton never needs to explain what, why it is, what they done, or with who. A real Clinton knows that they're entitled. And you don't get to know what they do. What, what difference does it make? For Clinton, what's loaded in some fat apple file? A Clinton plays the victim for promotion. A Clinton kills it off with a smile. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A server full of secrets ain't no thing. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. Nothing ever hits with the sting.